Three, two, one. Three, two, one. So my people, welcome back to news about narcos. This has been an active week. There's a lot happening um, in different territories along Mexico with different criminal organizations. So let's uh, jump right into it. Hi, I'm Luis Chaparro. Welcome to News About Narcos. I just broke in Ovidio's house. And I want us to start watching this video from Tamaulipas. It's a video that got leaked to social media by Mexican authorities operating in the uh, region of Soto La Marina and also in San Fernando, Tamaulipas. What we're seeing is a huge deployment, allegedly, by the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. This is a huge convoy. As you guys can see on screen, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Looking of uh, something over the twenty different pickup trucks, SUVs, suburbans, all kinds of uh, trucks allegedly branded with the four letters C, J, and G. Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. What is extremely rare from these. Um, what is happening on this video, what we're seeing on screen, is that the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación usually don't operate this way. The Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación is currently present in places like Ciudad Juarez, Tijuana, San Luis Rio Colorado, even Mexico City. But we've never seen a huge convoy coming into a city so aggressively like as we are watching on screen right now. I'm going to get rid of the video right now. Um, I, and so basically what happened, uh, this is a press release, because now, you, you know, like Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación is huge on sending press releases to the media, uh, to the public um, opinion, right? They, they really want to uh, give out a, an explanation of what they're doing, their plans, whatever. So this is uh, something that also got leaked into social media, saying Zona Sur de Tamaulipas, Tamaulipas South um, Region. You guys need, uh, well, this is what the, the message says. You need to know that the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación has arrived to Tamaulipas. We have a lot of people on our hands and we're going to clean these three municipalities. So be aware, those working for the CDG, the Cartel del Golfo, the Cartel del Golfo is one of the oldest criminal organizations operating in that region, the region of Tamaulipas, not in every municipality, but uh, they're basically the biggest cartel in Tamaulipas um, since, uh, well, since probably 20, 30 years now. Um, the Zetas splinter off from the Cartel del Golfo, so they have huge presence. They've managed to get rooted in that area. And those guys, uh, the Cartel del Golfo is usually fighting against the Cartel del Noroeste, a splinter off. Um, we know the Cartel del Noroeste, we've, we've heard about that cartel because it's the cartel that allegedly kidnapped these four Americans uh, that got across they came from North Carolina, got across into um, Tamaulipas. They got kidnapped, two of them got killed. Um, the other ones uh, made it alive and are back in the U.S. And um, so I'll continue reading. Um, there's going to be heads flying starting today. All of you who are outside in the streets after 11 at night, 
will be visited by my army, CJNG. So if you're stopped by a checkpoint, just follow the indications, instructions, or else. We're not looking for any problem with the uh, state guard, but if you want to fight, we have enough uh, arsenal. Uh, pura gente del señor Mencho. Tamaulipas, puro cartel Jalisco, nueva generación. Month of May, we are in. Entramos con todo. Las cuatro letras en zona sur. Major word allegedly by Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Let me tell you something. I'm not completely sure that this is um, accurate. That this is, I, I have no confirmation. I've spoken with different sources from five sources, only two of them working uh, with the um, Tamaulipas state government said this is legit. These guys arrived to Cartel Jalisco, I mean, these guys arrived to Tamaulipas. Um, the way they, they usually operate is through, uh, through links. They usually do truce or start working as partners with the um, antagonic cartel, whatever that zone is uh, fighting with. Uh, like in Ciudad Juarez, they made, a, made an alliance with uh, La Empresa, which is a splinter off of the cartel de Juarez. In Tijuana, they started working with what was left of the Arellano Felix organization. Uh, so they've been working through alliances, um, you know, like recruiting or lending the brand to different gangs, different other cartels, small cartels. This is the first time we see the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación entering a turf so brazenly. Um, this is definitely a signal of huge violence in that area. Now, this could be definitely a hoax by the Tamaulipas government. The Tamaulipas government has strong links with um, the Texas government. And the Texas government now is trying to declare Mexican criminal organizations as terrorist groups as a political move. Make no mistake, these guys are not trying to make a security operation to stop cartels. They're trying to do a political move uh, specifically to get a hold of a huge basin with a lot of natural resources like uh, oil, uh, shale gas in that region. That region of uh, the um, northeastern part of Mexico is huge on, um, on uh, shale gas. That of course, during an economic crisis in this country, in the US, shale, uh, oil is a lifesaver, yeah, right? Um, so the Cartel Jalisco, what, I, what I've uh, read and what I've uh, been told by different sources in Tamaulipas is that the Cartel Jalisco entered through this town, which is San Fernando. This is one of the first places they hit San Fernando, Tamaulipas, a place known for being um, sort of like a center of operations for the Cartel del Golfo, also not too far from the Golf of the Mexico, from the Mexican Gulf. And also they arrived by boat through Soto La Marina, really close to the Gulf as well, major um, center of operation. This is uh, Soto La Marina where we're watching in screen right now. So the uh, new war breaking in Mexico, and we're gonna be hearing, and there's gonna be a lot of follow up on this one breaks in Tamaulipas state, a uh, place huge, first of all, for natural resources like shale gas, oil, a lot of minerals as well, a uh, strategic place because of the uh, Mexican Gulf to uh, transit and, and uh, traffic legal and illegal goods. And one of the uh, oldest organizations fighting, one of the newest organizations, Cartel del Golfo fighting against Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Let's, uh, let's be patient and wait until we have a stronger sourcing, stronger evidence that the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación is actually fighting that area. Because what I feel skeptical about is the way the Cartel Jalisco entered these couple of towns or this region in Tamaulipas. Um, I've heard, um, heard uh, two-way uh, radio communications 
where the uh, Cartel del Noreste allegedly is calling out different other groups to, uh, to uh, join Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación to fight against the Cartel del Golfo. And I've also heard, uh, you know, communications between the people of Cartel del Golfo saying Tamaulipas es para los Tamaulipecos. Tamaulipas is for uh, Tamaulipas residents, right? Like trying to defend an old... Um, territory owned by them. It's, 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 it's fucking hypocritical, right, to say that as a, as a criminal organization. It's like, no, we're going to kill these people. You're not allowed to kill and extort and uh, extortion and kidnap these people, right? It's only us. Crazy shit, guys. But, uh, but yeah, let's wait patiently to see where this story goes, to see if uh, El Mencho, um, the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación in other regions where they have strongest uh, presence like Veracruz or Michoacán, Jalisco, they come out and say, dude, this wasn't us, this is a different group, which could be pretty interesting to hear. Let me stop you here for a second. There is no way YouTube is going to monetize this video. So if you're finding this information useful and timely, please consider hitting the super thanks button below to make a donation. Keep in mind that I'm doing these on my own resources in my own time. Thanks again for your support, Compass. Also, this brings us to some other news about regarding these three handsome guys. Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, Ivan Archibaldo Guzman Salazar, and a missing um, Joaquin Guzman Lopez, Los Chapitos. These guys are out of Sinaloa. First time probably that they run as cockroaches out of Sinaloa. And this is only because by sources, they are afraid of what the US and Mexican government are doing right now. They are angry at the Mexican government because they say we've been paying shit tons of uh, US dollars to these guys to protect us. But when the uh, DA mafia comes in, there's no way you can run. And they know that. The uh, latest indictment against them and the latest uh, press conference by Milgram, the uh, DA um, chief in the US, in Washington, saying that they're going to go all the way until they capture Los Chapitos and dismantle the whole operation for allegedly doing this what you're watching on screen, making and pressing tons and tons of fentanyl pills, lazing white China heroin with fentanyl and exporting shit tons of this stuff to the US. So again, uh, a couple of months ago, I did this video saying this is the end of Los Chapitos. And it's not something I'm saying, it's something that you can definitely, I mean, you, you don't need to be a super smart one, right? To know that once the two governments start talking and start targeting a criminal organization, they're going to go against them. One of my sources said that uh, at least two of the Chapitos, along with these people, were hiding in Sonora, in the region, uh, along the region of Altar and uh, Nogales, but that they're moving to other states. Where are they gonna move? Who the fuck knows? I'm pretty sure that they are not gonna be available to, I mean, able to get out of the country uh, unless they had already. They could probably be in South America where they have the strongest connections in places like Honduras or Guatemala. But remember what happened to their dad when he tried to to Guatemala in, to, in 1999. He was captured by the Guatemalan army, turned over to the Mexican authorities, straight to jail. So yeah, um, Los Chapitos are out, out of Sinaloa, along with El Nini and El Panu, and another uh, dozen of their operators. Another first time move here, by Los Chapitos, whose uh, stronghold has always been Sinaloa. So does this mark the end of Los Chapitos? This definitely marks the beginning of the end of that faction. In benefit, of course, of El Mayo Zambada, 
which uh, has been turning in a lot of work, a lot of his uh, own fentanyl manufacturing places. He's been turning into the Mexican government, snitching on his own people, snitching on his, his own operations and operators, and uh, agreeing with the Mexican authorities to blame Los Chapitos as owners of all these huge fentanyl laboratories. So let's see what happens also in the future. Let's stay vigilant for where the Chapitos turn out to be when arrested, because that's gonna happen, guys. There is no other way. Some more news from the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Have a look at this photo. This looks like a nice meeting, right? This looks like when the paisas with the U.S. Um, Mexican workers in the U.S. go back to their towns in Mexico and bring a lot of goods for the people, for the towns. Well, this is no different. The only thing is that uh, this, what we're looking in screen, on screen right now, is a toy delivery for the Mexican Children's Day by the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, order by no other than El Mencho, yours truly. He ordered to deliver shit tons of toys to the kids of this small town in Michoacán. Usually, I mean, they've been doing this for a good while. There was a time when they, uh, I think it was on the um, Dia de Reyes, when they also delivered a lot of uh, toys and food for kids on, on different small towns in, in Michoacán. And um, also El Dia de las Madres, they delivered a lot of uh, goods uh, to, to the mothers from different small towns in Michoacán. This time, they handed over these beautiful soccer balls um, and also the spensas, which is uh, bags with candies, food, canned food and all that stuff. And this beautiful fake Gucci handbags. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. It's like Gucci, but with uh, the pattern of Louis Vuitton or something like that. I don't even know what that is. But all of, uh, all of the goods have the stamp of Al Señor de los Gallos. Feliz Día del Niño de su amigo, El Señor de los Gallos. Happy Children's Day from your friend, El Señor de los Gallos. That's how uh, El Mencho is known. Beautiful, Leonard. I mean, this is how Mexican criminal organizations um, earn turf, earn social basis. This is how cheap we are in Mexico in terms of collaborating uh, and uh, basically turning over information to these criminals against the Mexican government or other rival criminal organizations. It's, uh, it's so easy to buy social bases in Mexico because on most of these towns, people are absolutely abandoned by the Mexican government. They have nothing. They've been asking for water, for streets, for pavement, for schools, and they don't get shit. The only time they watch the Mexican government appear is when they go and fight and kill a lot of people, a lot of innocent, a lot of cartel members, but nothing good from them. And so this is what they're left with, with a lot of, um, with a lot of, uh, Shitty toys by El Mencho handed over to poor kids. It's kind of low, right, to play with kids, to appeal to kids, to entice people to participate or legitimate a criminal organization. I don't know, man. And lastly, a very interesting capture in El Mencho surf in Jalisco, in Zapopan. One of the um, wealthiest uh, territories in the state of Jalisco. They captured this guy you're watching on screen. Rodrigo Paez Quintero, known as El Litio. He was captured 
by people of the Interpol working along with the Mexican military forces, special forces. He was one of the major targets of the uh, so-called um, Cartel de Caborca. Many have doubts that this cartel exists, but again, what is a cartel if not a brand? Probably that brand is not that huge, but it most definitely exists. This cartel was founded by Rafael Caro Quintero and his family, the Caro Quinteros down in Caborca. It mostly operates in uh, Caborca, Pitiquito, Altar, and that region of, uh, of Sonora. And the head after Caro Quintero was uh, arrested a first time for the killing of DEA agent Kiki Camarena back in 85, and then set free in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, went into hiding until uh, last year he was recaptured again. But ever since, the one operating was this guy, Rodrigo Paez Quintero, El Litio, the lithium, interesting nickname, right? For a guy sitting literally over a territory that has one of the biggest lithium reserves in America. Interesting. Let's see what happens. And this reminds me of this other guy, Carlos Caro Quintero, also captured. He was captured in Mexico City in the neighborhood of Polanco a couple of months ago. And nobody fucking knew who he was. The Mexican authorities said he was one of the Caro Quintero brothers, brother of Rafael Caro Quintero. I spoke uh, with uh, the attorneys of the Caro Quintero family back then, and they said, we don't have a clue who that man is. He's definitely not brother of Rafael Caro Quintero. Um, federal uh, officials confirmed also he's not part of the Caro Quintero family. So I don't know what kind of game was the Mexico City police trying to pull off on this one. They never said anything back again. They never put out any press release. Uh, Mexican media never followed up on that one. And he just fucking disappeared like that. We never knew if he was actually a Caro Quintero. Also a story that reminds me of this funny fat guy who was arrested a couple of years ago. Uh, well, more than a couple of years ago and was said to be Jesus Alfredo Guzman, one of the Chapitos. And turns out the Mexican government fucked up and he had nothing to do with Los Chapitos. This is what we're left with. I mean, this is why I tell you guys, source your news, find different sources. Listen, of course, to news about Narcos when I'm trying to bring you um, the most uh, interesting, raw, but also confirmed news. I can be mistaken, uh, of course, but uh, also look for other news outlets. I mean, don't go only by the official version of things because we have these kind of fuck ups. We have Abbott kind of fuck ups calling this family who was victim of a murder by a man in Texas and he was calling the five of them illegal immigrants given that they were actually permanent residents of the US. But that's for another week. Let's keep uh, gathering news from Monday to Monday and uh, let's uh, see each other guys next Monday with another week of updates regarding all things crime, all things narco on news about narcos. Thanks, brothers. It's me again, compas. YouTube is monetizing less and less every time. So if you're finding this information timely and useful, please consider subscribing. Please consider sharing this video so more people can watch it. And also please consider making a donation either through the super thanks button here or in any other of the videos you like, or making a donation through buy me a coffee slash Luis Chaparro. Thanks, compas. See you on the next beat.